Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the TV show. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about illegal moves. And to help me do that, I have none other than National Tournament Director, International Arbiter, Ken Blue. Ken, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, Chris. Thank you for having me. No, you're welcome. Uh, so to anyone who doesn't know Ken, Ken, uh, very importantly to us in this show, is the chair of the U.S. Chess Rules Committee. Uh, Ken is also chair of the election committee, so when you're sending in those votes, etc., so he's, he oversees that process. Uh, he's also a member of the Tournament Director Certification Committee. We covered that on last week's episode. Uh, a member of the FIDE Events Committee. And also, are we allowed to say a member of the Ethics Committee? Is, is it hush-hush? Oh, okay, good. Oh, no, no. As long as the membership's not hush-hush and I'm not... Do you, sort of uh, divulging any secrets there to the world. Nope, that's that, that that's in the do. minutes of the delegates meeting, and it's also <laughs> on the committee list on the US oh. Chess website. Okay, great. So Ken, as a little introduction to people, let's let's find out a little about uh, about you first. How did you? Uh, what got you into being a TD, Ken? I started directing in 1977 while I was in high school. I was in Rhode Island at the time, and I hooked up with the Rhode Island Chess Association. It turns out that Professor Armand Petruco, a history professor, European history as I remember, at Rhode Island College, had set up a chess club there and also had set up the first scholarship that Rhode Island College had given for chess. So I hooked up with him and I learned how to direct under the tutelage of Dan Semenoff and Vincent Nardacci. Uh, Dan was a director in Rhode Island. Vincent, Vincent was really into scholastic chess. All right, great. And then um, just quickly before we get into the, the meat and potatoes of tonight's uh, um, show, um, as the chair of the rules committee, can you give us any sort of insight into what might be coming down the pipeline at the uh, delegates meeting in terms of rules changes? Well, the question is whether there's actually going to be a delegates meeting given the <laughs> coronavirus situation. Um, right. If there is no delegates meeting, the plan is to have a special meeting to take care of essential business. And even if there's only a special meeting, one change coming down the road is a complete rewrite of chapter 10 of the rule book, which is internet chess, particularly applicable in these days. Yes, yes. I've been... Uh heavily involved in the chess.com online FIDE Nations, uh, Nations Cup uh, recently. And I got a chance to see behind the scenes with all the stuff that goes on there. It's, it's intriguing and very, uh, very technical what they do. So uh, for anyone running uh, online chess, especially rated chess, um, good luck. <laughs> all right, let's, let's get into tonight's presentation then. So tonight we're going to talk about illegal moves. Um, so... Let's uh, start with um, covering the rules. What does the rule book say about illegal moves? Well, the first rule we have to look at is rule 11A. So you want to be in section 11 of the rule book, chapter one. Uh, 11A talks about uh, illegal moves during the last 10 moves. Uh, if during a game it's found that one of either player's last 10 moves was illegal, and neither player is in time pressure, and there's a reference there to 11D1, and we'll cover that in a minute, the position shall be reinstated to what it was before the illegal move. The players don't recover the time used after the illegal move. Um, and then the game shall continue with the touch move rule, uh, which is rule 10, and uh, replacing the illegal move. And if you can't reinstate the position, um, then the illegal move stands, and uh, you've, you've got to make some adjustments to the clock, possibly based on the move counter um, and also some other factors. So this, this basically tells you um, this is for regular non-sudden death, um, which we'll be clear in a moment once we look at the, uh, the next uh, couple of rules, I believe. So this, this tells you if an illegal move during the last 10 moves, then, then you basically go back to the illegal move Make the player make a correct move with the touch move piece, if possible. Uh, remember, if they can't do that, they're allowed to move anything. And then the game continues from that point. Uh, Ken, so one interesting thing we were talking about offline a little earlier today was, um, well, what is the definition of an illegal move when it comes to US chess? Well, Chris, good luck looking for the definition of illegal move in the official rules of chess. 
it's not in there. However, we should just basically assume from well, basic common sense that an illegal move is the opposite of a legal move, and legal moves are defined in Rule 8. Section 8. Moves into pieces. Yeah, exactly. So essentially, an illegal move is any move that does not comply with the requirements of Rule 8. Yes, and I believe that's that's the best way to think about it. So, that, and as tournament directors, of course, we all recognize what an illegal move is. You know, if a bishop comes off the diagonal, if a uh, king castles out of check, if you know, and and those are all violations of of Rule Eight and uh, the various things in that little section. So, if if one of those illegal moves happens, then then that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, let's move on to the next one real quick. Um, which talks about uh, illegal moves that go past the last 10 moves. So this is 11b. So this, this we get a little bit different from the FIDE rules here. So US Chess, uh, if, if it's found that an illegal move was made prior to each player's last 10 moves, uh, the illegal move shall stand and the game shall continue. Now this can lead to obviously some, some weird situations. Um, I, I don't know how often, Ken, have you had any situations where... An illegal move wasn't noticed for more than 10 moves, but then it was brought to your attention? No, I haven't had that personally. No, I, I don't think I have either. Um, I think if, if an illegal move is, if the only way you're gonna notice that is if suddenly a piece can suddenly do something it probably isn't meant to be able to uh, at some stage, or you end up with two bishops on the same you know color, diagonals, or you know, and then something happens and it sort of clicks. But I don't think I've ever had this happen where um, someone's mentioned the illegal move prior to 10 moves ago. I've actually had one case where an illegal move happened and even after 10 moves, in fact, for the rest of the game, neither player noticed it. Right. Uh, what happened was a player captured the opponent's pawn on passant and forgot to remove the opponent's pawn from the board. Okay. The game continued. The way it was finally found was one player was trying to enter the move into chess space and then notice that, oh, right. that pawn is not supposed to be there. Now, I will point out for 11b, there is one important exception. And that is, if the illegal move has left a king in check, right. then you do have to go back as far as it takes. Ten moves or more doesn't matter to get back to a legal position. Right. Basically, every move since that illegal move was also illegal. Yes. So, so if, you, if your illegal move leads to an illegal move, I get, you, you know, you can, uh, sort of a little chain reaction thing going on there. So, yes. Exactly. So anyway, so we've, we've, we've covered illegal moves within the last 10 moves and illegal moves uh, prior to the last 10 moves. Um, so this is rule 11D, and this one's actually titled Illegal Move. Um, so this, this, this one tells you what happens if a player completes an illegal move uh, by pressing the clock. So remember, uh, you complete a move when you press the clock. Um, you, you make a move or determine a move, uh, and then you complete it. So in addition to the usual obligation to make a legal move with the touch piece, so touch move, uh, if possible, the standard penalty specified in Rule 1C2A applies. I'm sure we all know what that is. But if you don't, that's coming up on the next slide. Um, and then, Ken, this was the uh, slight wording change that came into effect January 1, 2020 here. Um, if the opponent has completed a move subsequent to the legal move, the standard penalty shall not apply. What, what was the reasoning behind um, clarifying that? This came out of a discussion in last year's rules workshop. This change in red took place starting January 1st of this year. What it means is that a player cannot try to gain an advantage. For example, the player might see the illegal move and think, eh, that actually leaves me in a better position. Go on and play some more moves, then make a bad move and realize you're in a bad position. So now you try to claim the illegal move and try to get your penalty, your, your standard penalty as well. So now 
this requires that you have to claim the illegal move before completing a move on your own. If you want to get the penalty. If you want to get the penalty, that's absolutely right. Um, otherwise, you can still claim the illegal move within the 10 move window, but you will not get the time adjustment. Right, exactly. So anyway, let's let's move on to what is the standard penalty. So 1C2A, uh, just hopping back to the beginning of the rulebook, uh, except where it's specifically noted in the rules, the standard penalty is basically adding two minutes to the remaining time of the opponent. So if we hop back here, a player completes an illegal move by pressing the clock. Um, he has to replace that illegal move with a legal move with the touch piece if possible. And you then award two minutes to the opponent. However, if the opponent has completed a move after um, the illegal move, then he doesn't get the two minutes. So that, that's basically what that means. And if there are various other moves in between, you know, um, again, you know, you, you go back to that, as long as it's within the 10 moves, you go back to that illegal move, but, but you don't give the two minute penalty. So that's, that's basically what that rule um, is now saying. And then we go on to 11D1, um, which now talks about time pressure. So the previous illegal moves um, were rules were basically talking about um, non-time pressure um, because 11D1 sort of overrules if a player is in time pressure, sort of overrules some of the previous rules that we just mentioned. So it gives a definition of what time pressure is. So if either player has less than five minutes left in a time control, um, and that includes multiple time controls. So if you're playing 40 moves in two hours, etc., cetera, and the, you know, someone has less than five minutes in the first time control, that game is in sudden death. And then once it comes out of sudden death again, then it's in back into regular um, moves. I, uh, Chris, I think you meant yeah. to say time pressure. Oh, time pressure, right. So exactly. So... Um, yeah, uh, unless an increment or delay of 30 seconds or more um, is being used, and then we don't really get time pressure um, if that happens. So, and it also goes on to say a director should not call attention to illegal moves in time pressure. So only the players may make that claim. So if you're watching a game and it's in time pressure, one player has four and a half minutes and the other one has an hour, that still counts as that game being in time pressure because what either of you know one of the players has less than five minutes um so the director should not call attention to the illegal move let the let the player make the claim there and um it also goes on to clarify that if during the game in time pressure a player's claim that one of either player's last two moves was illegal is it is upheld by the td the position shall be reinstated to what it was before the illegal move and the procedure in Rule 11A, period, oh, well, gosh. I believe it should say, and the procedure in Rule 11A applies. So basically what this, this 11D1 is telling you, it's talking about time pressure, it says you don't correct the illegal moves, um, well, you don't call attention to illegal moves, not that you don't collect them, correct them. However, now you don't have the 10 moves um, definition, to go back to, you only have two moves to go back. So if subsequently two moves have been completed um, in time pressure, then you cannot correct uh, the illegal move um, at that stage. So, um, and of course the regular penalties still apply if someone claims it immediately. Uh, if again, they make a move, uh, complete a move uh, subsequent to the illegal move, they, they won't get the two minutes um, added to their clock. And just briefly, um, you know, I, I brought this up in the rule book um, as to, to show what it was before and after to Ken. I don't, don't think there's any way, any need to go over that, but you can go back and look at the 2019 and the 2020 rules. There was some wording here at the end of the 2019 uh, session. Actually, we, we will go and have a quick look at the 2019 rule book uh, here. So 11D1, it talked about uh, the illegal move and the procedure in rule 11 shall be followed. And then it says with no adjustment to the time on the clocks. And as you can see, 
that has subsequently been uh, removed um, and basically it just stops at and the procedure in rule 11a applies um, Ken I, I what what was the main reason for the removal of that wording yes the motivation for that when we had the wording no adjustment to the time on the clocks we had an inquiry to the rules committee from a member asking whether that meant there was no penalty because assessing the two minute penalty would involve a change to the time on the clocks. And as Tim just says, when you have ambiguous wording, it's better to take it out than to add additional wording. So the reason we took out no adjustment to the time on the clocks is because that's covered in the procedure in rule A, 11A rather, shall be followed. And 11A specifies that there's no adjustment to the time on the clocks. So the wording here is both confusing and redundant. Yeah. So out it goes. Yep. Now, one other thing I'd like to mention is the reason why the window for claiming the illegal move reduces from 10 to two moves in time pressure. And that's simply because it's very disruptive in time pressure to stop the game, go back, correct an illegal move, assess the time penalty. And if you have to go back more than two moves, it can be a bit of a scramble to figure out where the last legal position is. Right. Now, as we were talking earlier, um, and I guess we can cover this a little later, you could get a situation where two players are in time pressure, they, they go beyond that two move threshold, and then they come out of time pressure um, and theoretically, you can then go back and correct the illegal move because then you revert back to the 10 moves um, <laughs> from, right. from, from the previous. Um, and that would happen if they crossed a time control segment boundary. Right. All right. So um, rule 11H, this is the one uh, that a lot of people, I think, seem to think the variation 11H1 is, is the main rule. But um, the, the, the rule in US chess, rules of chess, uh, the official rules of chess, 11H, um, says that the director collect, corrects illegal move outside of time pressure. So except in a time pressure situation, as we've already seen, a director who witnesses an illegal move being made shall require the player to replace that move with a legal one in accordance with 10B touch move rule. Uh, the time on the clocks shall not be adjusted we know that's not always right. It's talking about you don't get the time that you've, you know, if, if there's been various moves since the illegal move, then um, nobody gets a time adjustment. However, if someone claim, you know, if you claim it immediately um, after they've completed it, then the opponent does get the two minutes. Um, however, move counters on the clocks that have them may be readjusted. So this is um, uh, the main um, rule. So yes, uh, players should obviously claim illegal moves as they happen. But as a tournament director, um, you know, you're also there to witness illegal moves. And if you see one being completed, um, you should point that out. Uh, unless, unless you are using variation 11H1, which is the director's a witness only. So in an event in which most games are not watched by directors, a director may refrain from correcting all illegal moves he or she may notice and simply serve as a witness um, should one of the players point out the illegal move before 10 more moves have been made. So 11A. So basically what it's saying here is there are too many games to watch. Um, so um, if you can't watch all the games, then you can't possibly see all the illegal moves and therefore you shouldn't correct any of the illegal moves that you witness. Um, to make it fair for everyone, fair conditions for everyone. So, um, Ken, you're any any thoughts on this? Yes, it's you're absolutely right. It's amazing. We've taught players so well that directors do not get involved. They do not intervene unless there's a claim, except for illegal moves. And it amazes people that this variation eight eleven H one is not the actual rule. The corollary of this is, as a tournament director, you really should post a notice and make an announcement, although 
a notice should be sufficient before the first round that variation 11H1 is in use. And, and the other thing I would like to say on this point as well is if you are a tournament director and you are being asked to work in an event or you are the chief tournament director and you're giving commands to the rest of your um, your Minions. TDs in the event, you should make it very clear at the start which very, you know, whether you're using variation 11H1, predominantly you will be, um, or we're using the main rule 11H. So it says at the bottom, this variation does not need to be announced in advance. Um, you know, that, you know, you should re really still post an announcement somewhere at the tournament saying we are using variation 11H1, but as tournament directors, you all need to be on the same page. So you need to probably ask this question um, to, to your chief TD. Uh, if you're the only TD, uh, this is something you will have to determine before the event and make sure the players are aware of that. Um, just uh, it, it helps resolve many an issue if everyone's on the same page. And it looks like someone asked in the chat, do you recommend that the variation be announced in advance? Of, of course, we always do. Uh, even though it says you don't need to. <laughs> uh, let's cover a couple of other little rules that you might not think actually relate to uh, illegal moves, but they sort of do. Uh, 13A, checkmate. The player who checkmates the opponent's king, and I've highlighted, providing the main move is legal, wins the game. This immediately ends the game. Um, this means that even if you find an illegal move after... Uh, the game is finished. Um, no matter if it's within the 10 move threshold or whatever, it could be the move prior to it. As long as the checkmate in move is legal, uh, the checkmate uh, stands uh, and the game should be over. So uh, please uh, claim illegal moves um, um, when they can. And that's product, you know, that, that, that message is aimed at the players. Uh, it, it is for your own protection. And then also, um, because we have a checkmate, stalemate, uh, the same sort of uh, thing applies there. Um, providing that the opponent's previous move is legal, this immediately ends the game. So the stalemate also applies the same as checkmate does uh, in terms of illegal moves. Um, so let's have a quick uh, review, overview here. Hopefully this puts all the previous slides that we looked at into, into something very quick. Um, so remember, this is talking about a game not in time pressure. Uh, and we've got when is it claimed? So if it's immediately claimed, uh, what do you do? The action, you, well, you revert the position prior to a legal move. And the penalty is to add two minutes to the opponent's clock. Now remember, touch move applies to all of these um, illegal move issues, uh, you know, if, if necessary. Um, when is it claimed after the opponent subsequently completed at least one move? Well, you still revert the position prior to the illegal move, but there's no penalty now. Um, and then after both players have completed at least 10 moves or more, uh, they spot an illegal move that happened more than 10 moves ago. I'm sorry, uh, no uh, adjustment to the position is needed. You, you play continues from the current position. And there is also no penalty for uh, illegal move applied then. Uh, with the caveat that Ken mentioned earlier about uh, a king being in check, uh, for, for many moves, uh, you, you go back and correct it to the position uh, prior to where the player never got out of check uh, initially, if you can. So that's <laughs> sometimes it's a little rough. Um, and then also, when is it claimed after the game is over? That's meaning like the checkmate or the stalemate, uh, presuming that happened with a legal move. The action that you take is none, the checkmate or the stalemate stands, and of course you can't apply any penalty. I remember in all the above situations, the TD can claim the illegal move unless you're using variation 11H1. So that's that's very important to know uh, whether you're using that variation. And then we have the little time pressure review here. Uh, again, when is it claimed? If it's immediately, well, we've got the same issue. You, know, you go back to prior to the legal move, make the player make a legal move with the touch, touch piece and add two minutes to the opponent's clock. If uh, the opponent has subsequently completed at least one move, you still revert the position, but there's no time penalty now. Uh, after both players have subsequently completed two moves or more, um, player continues from the current position, and there's no penalty applied. And again, also after the game is over, 
it's tough, game's over, obviously there's no penalty. And in all the above situations now, the TD cannot claim the illegal move, irrespective of whether you're using variation 11H1, because you're now in time pressure. So once you're in time pressure, it um, means that you, um, you cannot claim, but the player can still claim. We've got a question in the chat saying, can you briefly describe resolution of an illegal move made, but the clock not being pressed? in case the opponent claims it immediately. Ken, would you like to uh, mention? Yes. If the, if the player making the illegal move has not pressed the clock, then the illegal move has not been completed. If the opponent points out that it's an illegal move, then the player making the illegal move just makes a legal move with the touched piece if possible. There is no penalty because the player did not complete the illegal move. And in fact, the player making the claim is technically out of order because he's not yet on the move. And the other thing to notice, mention with that as well, is if you're a tournament director and you witness this happen, um, you should definitely not intervene until the player has pressed the clock. So, um, you know, let them play the illegal move. They have until they hit the clock to go back and correct that um but you know if they hit the clock then assuming that you're you know you're not in time pressure and you're not using variation 11 h1 you can then point out the illegal move and say i'm sorry that move was illegal you know let's go back i'm gonna add two minutes to your opponent's clock you know uh, obviously the first thing you do is stop the clock but um you know and then deal with all that and then you move on from there so that is basically a review of illegal moves uh how to handle them in a regular game of chess um, what we'd like to do now briefly is touch on the U.S. Chess Blitz rules. And we know how much we all love the uh, special U.S. Chess Blitz rules that we have. So Blitz Rule 3B. Uh, illegal moves are handled totally different in Blitz. If an illegal position is created or an illegal move made without the opponent making a claim, the position stands and a claim not allowed when the opponent has determined the next move. Notice this is different from completed the next move. We've got a little bit of a variance between the two sets of rules here. But determined means they've actually picked up a piece and put it on a square or they've, you know, once that move cannot be changed, so they've got to pick up a piece and release it somewhere, um, then that move is determined, assuming it's legal. So um, if it's not legal, they can go back and determine a new move. But um, at that point, they still, until they determine a legal move, they still can go back and claim the illegal move. But once they've done that, that's it. They can no longer claim. Uh, 7D says a game is won by the player who, after an illegal move is completed by the opponent, captures the king. So king takes king or claims the win and stops the clock before the player determines a move and provided the player has sufficient mated material, etc. Uh, a player who moves his king adjacent to the opponent's king and then attempts to claim a win under this rule um, based on the opponent's failure to notice the checks shall lose the game. Uh, that, uh, that, I like that last little section there of 7D. But this is basically saying you can take the opponent's king if they leave it in check. Uh, and that is a way of claiming an illegal move, basically. Um, and 7E, an illegal move does not negate a player's right to claim on time, provided it is made prior to the opponent's claim of an illegal move. So if the claims are simultaneously, simultaneous, the player who made the illegal move loses. A player makes an illegal move. The guy points that out. And just as he does that, his flag falls. Um, when in doubt, the player who made the illegal, illegal move loses. So, however, if the other player claims the flag fall first, before the player claims the illegal move, then the flag fall stands. It, it's messy. It's blitz. It's you don't want to be in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, the last blitz rule that's very important to illegal moves is a player who has played an illegal move must retract it and make a legal move with the piece touch prior to pressing the clock. This again talks about determining the, the move. Um, you know, you, you've got to take it back. If you determine a legal move, um, you, you have to retract it and play a legal move. Uh, if no legal move exists with that piece, it can make any legal move. Illegal moves are unnoticed by both players, cannot be corrected afterwards. And an illegal move is completed when the player presses the clock. And that basically uh, covers the blitz rules. Sorry that I zoomed past them, but the reason I zoomed past all those blitz rules, as much as they're very important, 
Um, they're much more simplistic, I think, to handle. An illegal move loses is very simplistic from a TD's perspective. Yeah, there are a few, uh, you know, uh, weird situations that can arise, but it's blitz. It's meant to be a little messy anyway. Um, you just do your best as a tournament director to handle it. Uh, so let's let's move on to the bit that I know that you've all been waiting for, um, which is to test that you've actually been listening to Ken and I over the last uh, half an hour now. So we'll get on to the, the trivia. So trivia time. So um, basically what you're going to do um, now is if I can pull this up, uh, I'm going to open this and announce that we are accepting votes for your vote now. So trivia question one, you witness an illegal move made, but both players are in time pressure. Variation 11H1 is not in use. What should you do? Um, so type either A, B, C, or D in the chat. Uh, we don't have any answers yet. So A, you shouldn't do anything, nothing. B, require the player to replace that move with a legal one. Uh, in accordance with touch move and add two minutes to the opponent's clock. C, ask the opponent if he wishes to have the illegal move corrected. Uh, or D, require the player to replace that move with a legal one in accordance with the touch move rule and make no adjustments to the clock. So you witness an illegal move made. Both players are in time pressure. You're not using variation 11H1. What should you do? Come on, folks. I know there's more than two people in the chat here watching. We've got two votes so far. I'll give you another five seconds. I hope Ken has this one right. I believe so. I'm guessing. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and close that up. So uh, we had 100% of the people uh, going for answer A. You do nothing. And those people would be absolutely correct. Um, you do nothing because the both players are in time pressure. So you're witnessing a legal move. But the time pressure factor is there, and so you you can't do um, anything uh, about correcting that illegal move personally. Um, however, should one of the players claim it, obviously, before two moves have been completed, you can go ahead and um, deal with the illegal move then. Okay, let's move on to question two. And we will open the poll again. Uh, here we go. So, uh, during a game, the players discover that White made a legal move eight moves ago, but the position is now legal. Neither player is in time pressure. We're not using vari variation 11H1. Uh, what do you do? Uh, do you A, reinstate the position to what it was before the illegal move and add two minutes to the opponent's clock? B, reinstate the position to what it was before the illegal move and make no adjustments to the clocks? C, nothing. The game shall continue from the current position. Or D, give the players the choice of correcting the illegal move or continuing the game from the current position. Wouldn't it be great if we could just ask the players what they wanted to do? <laughs> <laughs> so come on, folks. A, B, C, or D. During a game, players discover white made a legal move eight moves ago, but now we've got a legal position. They're not in time pressure. And we're not using variation 11H1. So we got the the the. <laughs> okay, so we got three votes for this one. And uh, I'll give you another five, ten seconds here. Alright, let's go ahead and close the voting. Ken, I had uh, all three people that voted. Uh, we had 100% saying answer B. Uh, Yay! What do you think? Okay. Congratulations. Uh, we're, we're doing well. So yes, you reinstate the position of what it was before the illegal move. However, because it wasn't claimed immediately, there's no penalty made to the clock. So um, you, know, you, you don't add two minutes to the opponent. You don't make any adjustments to those clocks. They carry on from the new uh, position, touch move from eight moves ago. All right, let's see if we can bring up question three here. And go here, question three. All right, this is very similar to the last one. So, so A, B, C, or D. During a game, the players discover that White made an illegal move only three moves ago now. Uh, the position's again legal. 
Black is, however, in time pressure. We're still, again, not using variation 11H1. What do you do? Uh, do you reinstate the position to what it was before the illegal move and add two minutes to the opponent's clock? Reinstate the position to what it was before the illegal move, make no adjustments to the clock. Do you do nothing? The game shall continue from the current position. Or do you give the players again the choice of correcting the illegal move or continuing the game from the current position? And there was a, I'll answer this quick question. Uh, we got a schedule on expected topics for the TD show from week to week. And we're, we're working on that. So uh, we, we really want to. Uh, I am busy twisting arms right now to get guests like Ken to come on the show with me uh, and uh, giving uh, uh, these experienced national tournament directors sort of choice of subject they would like to cover. But yes, I would definitely like to determine a schedule of, of some uh, very brief topics to cover uh, rather than uh, trying to do it from week to week. So Ken, we had three answers in the chat and they all said answer C. We have a very sharp audience. And you are correct. You don't do anything because the players are in time pressure and we are past the two move threshold. So um, nothing. The players, they get to continue the game from the position that included the illegal move. So and no adjustment is made to the clock or the position. So let's uh, bring up question four here very quickly. And so question four. You're watching a game that is not in time pressure and witness an illegal move. However, the tournament is now using variation 11H1. What should you do? Should you do nothing, which is answer A. B, require the player to replace that move with a legal one in accordance with touch move and add two minutes to the opponent's clock. Do you ask the opponent if he wishes to have the illegal move corrected? Or do you require the player to replace that move with a legal one in accordance with the touch move rule and make no adjustments to the clock? And I think we have a sharp audience here. We've got four votes now in for this one. Ooh, but we have some different votes. We have a difference of opinion on this one, Ken. Somebody needs to phone a friend. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and close that off. So we had, uh, uh, I won't mention any names, Terry Winchester, but uh, <laughs> um, we had four out of five people say A and we had one person say D. And the correct answer is? Correct answer is A. A. We don't and do anything. Right. Go ahead. Variation 11H1 says that the director is only a witness. Without variation 11H1, B would have been the correct answer. There we go. I'm not even sure. I don't even know if Terry was answering this seriously or not. <laughs> we'll assume he was. Terry, I have to fail you. All right, question five. <laughs> Let's have a go here at question five. This is the last of the trivia questions for the night. So anyway, uh, White plays illegal checkmate on move 45, but the players discover immediately after that White's move 44 was illegal and neither player was in time pressure. So what do you do? Do you A, forfeit White for cheating? Do you B, reinstate the position to what it was before the illegal move and add two minutes to the opponent's clock? C, reinstate the position to what it was before the illegal move and make no adjustments to the clock because, um, you know, his opponent had subsequently made an illegal, uh, made a move. Or do you do D, nothing, and the checkmate stands. So on move 45, white played a checkmate. And on move 44, white's move was illegal, but it wasn't noticed by black. White plays 45, bam, checkmate. You didn't see me do that. And uh, we're, now the game is over. What do you do? So we have five votes in right now. And, and the person who, who said B is, is 
realizing they may have made a mistake and uh and and saying uh a replacement answer the replacement answer is not picked up by your poll this is we have to take your first answer <laughs> anyway ken uh we had uh one one person saying b and and four players saying d the majority uh, rules right this is the drama of this immediately ends the game in rule 13a exactly and one thing you, you uh, there was some th- someone that said it stands because the clock was hit. Actually, as soon as the checkmate's on the board, White doesn't even have to hit the clock. Uh, once that once that checkmate is on the board, it's on the board, and that's it. The game is over. So, um, the, you know, until White m- made that move forty five, uh, Black could have, um, you know, yeah. People are saying that's not fair, uh, but that that is how the rules are written, and that's exactly. Um, how you should deal with it as a tournament director. Uh, so that's it for tonight's show. Um, I would like to uh, thank you all for tuning in and for spending uh, what, 30, 40 minutes with us. Uh, hopefully you've, you've learned something uh, tonight by, by going over the illegal move rules. And um, hopefully you'll be able to, at some stage, put them into practice. Uh, right now, if you're uh, overseeing online chess, you you obviously illegal moves don't happen um, with online chess but should once we get back to playing over the board chess um you should hopefully be able to put some of this knowledge uh, to good use i would obviously like to thank uh, our guest for this evening uh, national tournament director in tash Laba, ken Ballou. ken thank you very much for joining thank us you. thank you very much chris i hope this was helpful uh, I, i'm sure it was definitely was helpful to me and it sounds like it was very helpful to some of the people in the chat too so thanks a lot for Hi, tuning Terry. in. <laughs> thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. And we will see you next Thursday at 9 o'clock. Have a good evening, everyone. Goodbye. Good night.